Hey guys, welcome to the Silver Report Uncut. So we need to talk about bankruptcies. It's getting pretty serious. By the way, Hertz stock was trading above $7 yesterday. I'm not sure if you saw that. This company's stock price has increased by 300% since filing for bankruptcy and since Carl Lacan has sold his entire position, which was 38% of the company. He sold at a tremendous loss. It's actually trading higher than before the bankruptcy. Which brings me to a Another very important point. Now the thing is, retail investors, they're positioned extremely bullish. They have been. They have an attitude that this whole thing is over, the economy is getting rolling again. The issue is, what brought Hertz's stock down to 66 cents a share? And the truth is, it was the bankruptcy. It's that a stock becomes effectively worthless whenever a company files for bankruptcy and they issue new stock once it opens up again. And when the company emerges from bankruptcy, what typically happens is there are some vulture investors that rush in and buy some of the shares. They wait for it to begin opening and they typically dump their position, which brings the price down quite a bit as soon as the company emerges from bankruptcy. Judging by what the company does next, some of the problems may still be there. Now, the thing that's happening with Hertz is the fact that they have been having their cars sold by their lenders. They owed them a lot of money. The cars were collateral. This company is shrinking dramatically in size right now. Even in bankruptcy, even if the company says they plan to emerge stronger. But it shows this irrational exuberance that is extremely present in the market. In fact, hedge funds, we brought up recently how they were extremely bearish on this market. And they were staying out of the market. However, they've jumped in. Now Citigroup, their analyst, they suggested a lot of this is short covering meaning they had gone short on the market and they were getting beaten down, taking heavy losses. So in order to cover that, they extended their long positions. But they've done so at near record leverage. There's a saying that the market can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. One of the quickest ways to reach this new floor again, to retest those lows, it's going to be these bankruptcies. The thing is, we are seeing a major surge in bankruptcies already. Debt is not a solution. Debt is a problem. We see how quickly Hertz went from $20 a share down to 66 cents. It happened very, very rapidly within a couple months. Now, typically, the unemployment rate in the U.S. is very closely tied to Chapter 11 bankruptcy filings. They run an extremely tight correlation and what's shocking is the unemployment rate is at levels never before seen in history. And when you look at the actual number of unemployed people in the United States, it's somewhere near 40 million. So far beyond anything revealed in the jobs report. Yet there is some optimism among retail investors and there is some capitulation among hedge funds. Bankruptcies, they're a threat. In fact, the number of Chapter 11 filings is about to flood the US economy like nothing we've ever seen before. And it may have already begun. Now it began late in May. First off, there were the retail landlords. They were sending out thousands of default notices to their tenants. Now these retailers, they've had a total collapse in foot traffic. Many of them, their stores are in a condition in which they're inoperable at the moment. Sales, cash flow, it's all dropped dramatically. Many of them were simply unable to pay their debt obligations. Now, restaurants, department stores, apparel merchants, specialty chains, they've all been receiving notices from their landlords. And if you recall, we just brought up how Simon Property Group, they sued one of their largest tenants, if not their largest tenant, The Gap, for nearly $70 million. A large chunk of these have gone as long as three months without receiving their rents. Now, I wanted to bring up the comments from Andy Greiser. He would be the co-president of the real estate company, A&G Real Estate Partners. He said, quote, the default letters from landlords are flying out the door. It's creating a real fear in the marketplace. Pressure from default notices and follow-up actions like locking up the stores, terminating leases when cited in the bankruptcies. Many chains stopped paying rent after this crisis closed most U.S. stores. They were gambling that they could hold on to some of their cash before the landlords demanded payment. So far, there's been an estimated $7.4 billion in rent just for April that has not been paid. 
the main numbers that are about to be released soon, but that's only 45% of what is owed. 45% across the entire U.S. Now, according to a recent analysis by CoStar Group, they found just a quarter of expected rent payments have been received by landlords. Now, the American Bankruptcy Institute, they announced that corporate bankruptcies soared during May. So a lot of retailers, they were not paying their rents in April. The bankruptcies, they begin to arrive. So a lot of retailers weren't paying their rents in April. The bankruptcies are now beginning to arrive during May. Now, they have just officially announced that we did begin a recession in February. So the United States economy is currently in a recession. They have confirmed it. They've capitulated. It's now official, even though most of us know we've been in the Greatest Depression for some time. And that makes sense why Chapter 11 filings are at levels we have not seen since the Great Recession, that period between 2007 and 2009. Now, U.S. bankruptcy courts, they recorded 722 businesses nationwide filed for Chapter 11 protection just last month. That's a yearly increase of 48%. The same time period last year, there was 487. Now, the surge, month on month, it jumped 28%. So there were 562 Chapter 11 filings in April. Now, this is only the beginning of the waves of bankruptcies that are heading our way. Now, the number of corporate bankruptcies in May, they're the highest since May 2011. And large companies, they're beginning to file bankruptcy at near record pace. There were numerous small and medium businesses, but there's also several very large companies that filed for bankruptcy last month, like JCPenney, Neiman Marcus, J. Crew, Gold's Gym. Now, in May alone, 27 companies that reported at least 50 million in liabilities, they filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy and sought protection from their creditors. This is the highest number going back to the Great Recession. Actually, we should be more specific. For May 2020, for large U.S. companies, they had the highest bankruptcies only exceeded by May 2009. They far exceeded 2008, much higher than 2010, much higher than 2011. In fact, it was only two less companies than May 2009. Now, so far for the year, there's been 98 bankruptcies by major companies with at least 50 million in liabilities. This is also the highest since 2009. At that point, there were 142 companies that filed in the first four months of the year. Again, 2009 was the only year that is higher than the level we've seen so far in 2020. It's becoming so bad that there's now calls for Congress to increase the number of bankruptcy judges to try to ease the major rush of bankruptcies that are heading our way. Now, I wanted to bring up the comments from Deborah Williamson. She would be a bankruptcy attorney from San Antonio. Now, she said that she expects that business will be booming very soon and that so far, the businesses she's seen, they indicate that there will be much more work in the future. And she said hotels are not going to bounce back quickly. You're going to see a long-term effect on office space. The consequences are not just going to magically go away as you reopen. Now, James Conlon, he would be another bankruptcy attorney. He said his group was very busy during May with work across a range of different sectors, including energy, airlines, aircraft, lessors, real estate, automotive suppliers, hospitality, retail. Now, what's interesting is one of my major points that I bring up all the time is that he noted that many of them, they did struggle because of the downturn. However, the big issue was most of these businesses, they borrowed heavily leading up into this trouble. And of course, we know a lot of that borrowing, it was used to purchase their own stock. So they had no rainy day fund left for any problems, any delay. Now he added, quote, I think we're going to see an extraordinary number of large corporate bankruptcies, not just in the U.S., but across the globe. The Fed forced companies to take on even more debt, much of which has been spent on dividends. 
but thanks to the Fed's intervention, investment-grade corporations have been able to increase their balance sheets by borrowing $1 trillion during the first five months of the year. This is the fastest pace in U.S. history. Now, for the weaker companies, their revenues, they've been destroyed. They're barely able to keep up with their debt payments, and this is what is forcing them into bankruptcy court. Now, Amy Quackenboss, she would be the executive director of the American Bankruptcy Institute. They represent 12,000 professionals, and she issued a statement concerning the rush of bankruptcy, and she said the CARES Act and other SWIFT measures, they've been successful in keeping consumers afloat during this crisis. As this relief runs its course, Mounting financial challenges may result in more households and companies seeking shelter of bankruptcy. I think we're going to continue to see filings of at least the level we're seeing for a while. Now, I wanted to talk about a very immediate and important bankruptcy that is being prepared as we speak. Now, we have seen retail investors go crazy on this market, and I said that there's a real big concern that a lot of these companies are failing and yet people they have this irrational exuberance and they're just buying stock regardless of the economic activity so i wanted to bring up chesapeake they used to be the largest natural gas producer in the south the shares they've been climbing dramatically in fact now the company it closed on friday at 25 dollars it has jumped by over 300 percent to 84 dollars and 75 cents now, of course, many of the people who have purchased a stock might have thought they've gotten a great deal because everything's back to normal. Now, of course, many of the retail investors that have been going crazy over energy stocks, they thought they had a great deal and that everything was going to be back to normal. Now, Chesapeake just announced that they are preparing a bankruptcy filing and is going to hand over control of the company to their senior lenders, as in no value to existing equity. Now, the market cap has increased 425% the past two days. I know there were many who were thinking that we were going to have a V-shaped recovery. And this shale driller was one of the largest American gas producers before things turned south in the energy markets. So the company owes $9 billion in debt and is currently debating on whether or not to skip their interest payments that were due on June 15th while it talks with creditors. The company has begun soliciting lenders to provide debtor and possession financing to fund their operations during this bankruptcy. And according to the data, the Oklahoma City-based producer, they're negotiating a restructuring support agreement that would see holders of their Philo term loans take the majority of the equity in the bankruptcy. This is very serious due to the huge volume of retail investors who bought the dip anticipating that we were just going to get back to normal. Now the company, their bonds, they've been really telling a story. Their June 2021 bonds, they're right about the default and they're trading at three cents on the dollar. Now the equity holders, they're in real serious trouble because when you look over their balance sheet, they're going to be left with essentially zero. By the time you figure how much else they owe, the debt with a principal balance of $5.67 billion, it trades with a total impairment of $5.4 billion. Now, for the people who were buying into the stock the past few days and buying in at $89 a share, they could be in for a really rude awakening once this news begins to circulate. But the issue is, it's not just this company really becoming an issue. We're talking about waves of bankruptcies that are heading this way. We're talking about commercial real estate that is on the verge of being destroyed. Rent prices in some of the hottest property markets are already being crushed. It's amazing how the stock market can have a V-shaped recovery while the economy is in total collapse. It's madness. I thank you guys for stopping by and joining us. As always, stay safe.